Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God, we thank you this evening, God, for your presence. We thank you for this day that you have given us. And we continue to bless you, O oh God. I pray, God, as we, we gather in your house this World Wednesday, that we would be in the spirit, your spirit, God. And we want to say thank you. I pray, God, as we gather even in our homes, we would make our homes a sanctuary. We will gather that we will receive your word. Let not the sleep, the church sleep and slumber in a season and a time like this. But God, let us be active in what you would have of us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let us take hold of all things and not be distracted by anything, Almighty God. And we want to say thank you. Thank you, Father God. May we allow our lives to be used by you as we are vessels of honor and we continue to give it to be vessels of honor. We continue to aspire to be gold and silver. We coming out from one realm to another realm. We coming out from one glory to another glory. And God, we want to say thank you. So bless us as we go forward, God. Open up our hearts, our minds, our spirit, that we would hear your word and we would understand your word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Almighty God. Take hold of our atmosphere in this day, God, as only you and you alone can. And Father, we thank you for doing this and working this by the power and praise of your sweet Holy Spirit. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. Just bless each other with a bounce. Find each other and just... And since we have few, all of you who are on this side, come across on this side here. Bless the Lord. Let's come across on the side. Bless the Lord. You okay there, Paul? You all right there? Okay. All right, good evening to all those of you online. Good having you on World Wednesday this Wednesday. I hope you're having a good week. And I hope you're blessing the Lord. The one who have made the heavens and the earth and the one that have renewed breath in your, in your mortal bodies. Allow him to be God. Amen? Yeah. Allow him to be God. And um, I want us to be vigilant as we go and as we breathe and as we move and as we have our total being. Listen, we got to be vigilant. The church, let me tell us this, and those of us who are online, the church in the last days is going to be moving in supernatural. Eh? And if you don't want to believe it, start reading the word of God. She is going to be moving in supernatural. I'm telling you all, she is going to be moving in supernatural. And so it is not for us to allow our lives to move as though we are common. We are not common. We are supernatural. And we must allow God to use our lives for that which is supernatural. Are you with me this afternoon? And so I want to encourage the saints of God, the people of God, that we will not just settle for being commoners. Because we are not. God did not make us governors. 
And so it's for us to desire, God, I want to be used supernaturally by you. And, um, and let us give ourselves to the word of God so much. So, so much to the word of God. And, and be excited. Be excited. Be excited. <laughs> be excited. You know, it was, it was this morning. Was it this morning or yesterday morning? I'm not too sure. The day is flying fast. It's not, it's not this morning. It was yesterday morning. Have you ever noticed, and I'm sure all of us who drive, when you find a lot of dead animals at the side of the road, a whole train of them, and you don't know, but what's going on with these animals? You all know that season is back again, right? Yeah. Whenever you begin to see animals dead at the side of the road because they get bounced, whatever it is, run over, that is not normal. Just want us to know this. It's not normal. I'll leave it like that. It's a sign for those of us who understand the spirit world and REM to understand that there, are, that there are activities taking place in the spiritual REM right before us, amongst us, around us, and the animals just pass in the play. That's as much as I'm going to say. When you begin to see these things, you have to know how to engage in warfare because really it's about blood. And until we start to understand this, you will, you will begin to understand that in certain seasons and times, certain altars are really and truly sought out for certain things to happen. That's why in this type of season, there is a sleepiness that comes upon the church. There's a weariness that comes upon us. There's a tiredness that comes upon us. And what that is really designed to do is to dismantle us and literally call, in fact, render us powerless to do from the power position that God has put us. We're supposed to create a resistance. God has given the church the power and authority to create a, a resistance that the enemy flees. And so if we don't understand this and recognize this, most of us will fall into the sleep. And in this season, we cannot sleep. We have to arise. Are you with me, saints of God? We must arise. Those of you who are online, you must arise. You have to pray. And you have to get up purposefully to pray. It's a crucial moment around the world. And the only governing body that God has given authority on the earth is the church. And we must know that. And since we know it, we have to exercise it. Amen? So I want to encourage us, don't sleep. Pray. Get up and pray purposefully. There are times, you know the time God would wake you up to pray. But then there are times you just got to keep on praying. And you don't need time. You just keep on praying. It is that crucial. All right? Now, how many of us were blessed on Sunday by the word of God? I was. <laughs> and I believe that God is, God is helping us, every single one of us, to realize because I believe that every ministry is receiving the same word. Huh? I believe by revelation and the unity of the Spirit and the Father and the Son that he is speaking, preparing the body of Jesus Christ that we would engage for what is. We are part of everything. Wherever the church is, we are engaging. Principalities, powers, rulers, wicked spirits and all that, we are engaging. It's very important. So, that's, so that is why we must join the, the move of the kingdom. 
we cannot be about our own little single Christian life. No, it's not, it's not like that. We have to join the move of the kingdom of God. It's greater than our little individual Christian life. It's more than that. And so the more we join the move of the kingdom, you get a panoramic view of the whole. What is happening in the world? Than what is happening in our land? What is happening in my village? What is happening in my workplace? It expands you. Amen? And so, I'm not going to be sharing on Joseph this morning. I will be, this evening, sorry, I will be sharing on Joseph Sunday morning because I told you all where I stopped. I'm going to start on Sunday. So now we're going to get back now where I stopped on Wednesday. We're going to pick it up now and we're going to deal with some cleansing. So are we ready to hear more about cleansing? I hope we are ready to hear more about cleansing because we must clean ourselves. Everybody took a bath. Whether this morning, midday, whatever time. But the key is, we got to keep ourselves clean. Amen? And so, I want to deal with cleansing. And I want us to go back to 2 Timothy. Those of you who are online, turn with me to 2, to 2 Timothy chapter 2. That's where we were, verse 20. That's where we began. And we're going to continue to read this because I need to press this into us. And the more I look at it is the more God adds to that which he has already spoken. And the more you read it and listen it over, you will see how much more God is going to add. So please, in a time like this, don't be lazy to get into the word of the Lord, but get down into the word of the Lord, amen? So that God is going to be able to reveal more and more and more and more to us. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 20, it says this, reading from the NIV version, in a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood clay, some, of, some for noble purposes, some for, 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 for ignoble. Verse 21, if a man cleanses himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy and prepared to do any good work. Now, I don't know how encouraged you are by this scripture, but I am very encouraged by it. Because it gives hope right now that if you are believing and feeling that you are not all that, that I'm in the word category, what the word of the Lord is saying through Apostle Paul here is that you can move from the wood category and move up to the silver category. You can move from the clay category and move up to the gold category because in the house you have different levels, but at the same time, you can, you can present yourself based on what he is saying to us now and it can move you up into the place of usage. Because many of us want to be used by God. Use me, God. Whatever, use me, God. Use me, God. And I have heard from since I got saved, I hearing folks talk about God is using me to do this, and God is using me to do that, and God is using me, and God is using me. And that is excellent that God is using you. But the question comes now, what level of usury do you want to be used by God? How do you want God to use your life? As clay, look at right here. Clay. That's it. Clay. One word. There it is. This is wood. You want gold? It's not on inside here. You want silver? It's not done inside here. Nobody leave their jewelry box in the open for eyes to behold. Is that not the truth? When you know that your carrot of gold is not plated, it's real, solid, you know you don't leave that just anywhere. You have that on lockdown. Is that not true? Some will have it in a vault. Because depending on how, on how much carrot, you know the worth of it. Because you, 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 you place your finance, you put your money into gold. 
And whenever gold goes up, you could cash in and get more money. So you invest in gold. You will not leave that line around because it is not gold-plated nickel. Are we getting this? So now when you look at this scripture here, you are seeing God saying something to the church, saying something to us. So it's, it's for us to acknowledge that in the house, we have all this in the midst of us. But then he says, those who cleanse themselves from the latter. Now, this is something that he is not saying that I'm just going to do for you without you knowing. This is something that you come to me with and know that I'm doing. I want us to be very, very conscious about this. This is a decision that you make with your will because you have come to the understanding that God is not going to use me in this particular way I'm asking of him until I willingly come to him and say, God, this impediment must go. This sin that easily besets me must go. Come on, you all. Are we getting this? This is very important because if you don't decide to look at this, there are those that were transitioning from wood to clay, then to silver. Different levels. But they decide that I'm doing good. But you see, to get from clay to silver, you have things you got to deal with. And you can say, I'm doing good because I'm getting through between wood and clay. And hey, I'm enjoying the glory. Are you going to stick yourself here? Because you're enjoying the glory. I like how God is using me. But who say God is okay that you don't want to deal with the rest of the team? Or in two gold and then much more gold. Gold seven times tried. I like to hear folks make their boasts about those who make the sacrifice and never understood what was the sacrifice that they made. I like to hear folks tell me about Catherine Kuhlman and all this kind of stuff. And did you really ask Catherine, tell me? We delight in another person's sacrifice that we are not willing to even make. Many want to get the mantle, let it fall on me. And you don't know the sacrifice for them to even walk with it, bear it, and come into it. But it must just drop on you and boom, you are made. Y'all, you're living in a spiritual bubble. It don't work like that because God has not changed his mind and his ways. I'm telling you, God has not changed his mind, neither has God changed his ways. He said, I change not. So then guess what? As it was good for Moses, it's surely good for you. And we have to learn this now. So where we have allowed compromise and think that it's okay and you're getting through later down the road, you're going to meet the elephant that you were not prepared to take on. And they're going to ride over you. Cleansing is very important and vital for the well wholeness of a believer's life. Cleansing. We have to learn to clean ourselves. And we have, let me say this too, we have to learn to clean up after ourselves. There's a difference between the two. Because the clean up after yourself is when you went and did your boo-boo. You went and create your own disaster. You went and create your own mess. You're going to go back and you're going to clean it up. Because you don't want to learn patience. You don't want to learn self-control. So when you don't have patience and self-control, what do you think is going to happen to you? You're always exploding. When you explode, you splatter on many people. When you get the conviction, you start to cry and say, Oh God, I'm wrong. I should not have. Yeah, that's telling God that he is saying, Oh God, go and tell the rest of them. That's when we say, God, I, I really had to go and tell. Yes, you have to. Because they were right there. You represent me. And you misrepresent me. Then guess what you have to go and do? tell them what I said and what I did and how I behaved was wrong. It was not good before the Father and surely it was not representing the Father before you. Please forgive me. Are we ready? 
that is, are you ready for that stage? Because you see, when you have to step up on particular stage, make sure and see that you clear all these kind of stuff. Because as we are in the whole political, quote-unquote, atmosphere right now, what do you think is causing all the mudslinging? Tell me. Folks go in and dig up your garbage from where, like who, when. And bringing it up to the now. And we who like foolishness right now want to listen in the now and figure that happened today. When ask them, how long did that happen again? Huh? So how come it now coming up now? And folks trying to sway for a vote, for a vote by garbage? Kingdom people wake up. We don't vote by hearing garbage. Garbage don't sway us. A pure heart and a clean hand is what God wants. To rule and to govern our right. And whoever is willing to hold that, God is ready to use you. Now I know many don't want to talk to our government, but we have to talk to our government and those who want to be in government. We are not taking bringing garbage because we are the ones that have to forgive every man the wrong and the sin. So how dare us now wait for a vote? Come on, church. You want to stay in your robes by that? That kind of foolishness? Then automatically, if we decide to go on that side, let me tell us what we are going to be doing. Going against what the word of the Lord have admonished us. Don't get into foolish talk and foolish arguments. You can talk politics without being a fool, eh? Don't let fool people f sway you to think that politics is nasty. It is not nasty. Those who are nasty, nasty politics. And that's why we, the preachers and church, have not told our sons and daughters, we need you to get up inside there. We ain't preached that kind of message yet, but I want to preach it to us. Because in order for change to happen, Joseph had to be up inside there. For change to happen, Daniel had to be up inside there. And we read it right here in the Bible. Right here in the Bible, we read these things. But because we don't lean on a particular side to see God and stuff, we exempt ourselves. And that's like, why are you exempting yourself? Why? Why? But if we learn to clean our ways, wouldn't we not used, be used? That's what he says here for noble purposes. Would he not use you at the side of the president? Would he not use you at the side of the king? Do you know who told Naaman that he can be healed? It was a servant at the side right there. Noble purposes. Right there you are. That you can instruct your superiors in the way of being healed. You can instruct your superiors. You don't have to sit on the seat. But once you serve in the seat well, they're going to listen to you. And until we start to learn how to clean ourselves, then noble seats will not want us close. Oh, you all ain't hearing this. Noble seatings would not want us close. Because we are filthy. Our hearts are not right. And a heart that is not right will display its unrighteousness. I'm telling you. The mouth speaks from the abundance of where? The heart. So, okay, your behavior come out from where? Nowhere. You don't know what caused you to do that. You got aliens in you. Well, if you got aliens in you, you need a deliverance. It comes up from your heart. So not because the Bible said from, 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 from the heart the mouth speaks and that's the end of it. Put it in true context to the whole being. Wherever your, your, your heart be, your treasures are right there. Wherever your treasures are, your heart is right there too. Whichever way you want to take it, your heart is involved. Come on, y'all. So then, when we look at this now, how do you want to be used by God? I want special purposes. Personally, I want special purposes. And I'm learning in these days in my life, because when you hit 50 and you cross 15 to 152 and you're going down because you're descending, 50 is half of a cent 
a century. And you have to understand you are descending. You're not going up. You're going down. You're getting closer to three score to ten. That's, that's the limit for me to live. If I really look to say, hold God, full out of his word, but I like the exception, he said, if you have strength. That's why I love God. He says, if you have strength, the, 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 the allowance he has made, the flexing that he has given, is if you have strength. But if he was dogmatic in his ways, three score and ten, as you hit it, you die. Many gone already. Think about life now. And if you want to begin to calculate I just got 26. That ain't so long, y'all. Is election again, five years gone. You want to know where did those five went? Think about it, good man of God. Elder, think about it. All my seniors, you think about it real good. And start to count your years according to what is written in the word. And you would realize, oh, for the preciousness of God's grace. And when we begin to see it, it's supposed to now compel us so much to say, God, I want to be in the usage of special purposes. No, I can't afford to be playing the fool and moving by Kifai with the things of God. Now I must take cleansing and the washing by the word of God more seriously. Because he said, it's by my word I wash you. What have we been using to wash ourselves? Sure. What? What have you been using to wash yourself? Let, let, let me tell us, sir. The candles that the ladies love, because men, some men not into all the candles, right? But ladies are. And you want to give yourself a nice bath and ambience while you're taking your soak. You set the candles right there and it give off the odor. The light of the candles lights the place up good, gives a nice ambience. But that don't clean you, eh? The candle will clean you, eh? Y'all, it set the ambience. But the candle will clean you. The aroma of the candle don't clean you either. It just set the ambience. You could put on soft music that don't clean you. It just set the ambience. And I'm saying all this to tell us that there are times we set the ambience and figure the ambience is cleaning us. And up to now we have not done what really supposed to be done. And it's important for us to understand the difference that nothing is wrong with all those things. But get into the tub. And if the tub does not have what it takes to lift off the muck off your skin, then you're just taking a soak in water. I remember my days when I was stink. I was a nasty young boy. I never liked to bathe. Nasty young boy. Yes, y'all can laugh at me. I just laugh at myself too. Nasty as a boy. Especially on Friday, I try my best don't bathe. And Ella tried to see if I could live through Saturday into Sunday, and the next bath is Monday morning. That's how nasty I was as a boy. Yes. Nasty. Let's go. <laughs> my wife is saying, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> you see, Jesus was wrong, but he was not wrong. Man, I wasn't taking him on. But what shall I say? <laughs> and what I used to what what I used to do when my mother will threaten I will beat your boy. But me not big. She is just a threat, a bluff. I'll go in the bathroom. You know you had to heat up, right? Because it's drum water. So you had to build a little sweat and you dip and you straight fast. And you're done. You all are not soaping. So it's too long, and it's more water to wash it off. Too true. I good. Just water. Guess what? Go on the woman's sheet. Lie down and do your roll and sleep. But when you get up, what you gonna see on that sheet? Mom, that. 
She said, boy, you don't make good. Exactly so. Because I was just using, yeah, I should talk. Thank you. I'm, I'm just using water alone. Just water. And sometimes, as believers, we have not allowed the word of God. We have not used the word of God to wash us. We have used the opinions of men. We have used gossip. We have used backbiting. Listen to me. We have used jealousy. All these things we have used. That's why we have sick believers. Misrepresenters. That are naming the name of Jesus and don't understand why they are doing it. Because you are not clean. You have not used the word of the Lord. To wash yourself. You have to use the word of the Lord to wash yourself. You have to use the word of the Lord to wash yourself. That's why God said the laundry of soap. That's my word. My word is the refiner's fire. I'm going to do this. And until we begin to believe God at his word, and say, God, you got to wash me. Now, some of you might be saying, but how does this really work, man of God? When God says, if this is to be done, and this, this is the results when you do it, then follow what God says. When you do it, you are washing out one thing and making room for another thing. You know it don't feel good to take a real good bath and put back on the same dirty clothes. All of a sudden, what was on that clothing that wasn't scratching you begins to scratch you now. Why? Because dirty have now met clean. We getting this? Because I have washed out what made my body susceptible to what is on. So everything...